yeah, without much addressing the idea of what you're not. That to me was the fundamental uh, nugget I came out with going to satsangs like in 2000 and stuff. So I, I just felt something was off there. Yeah, I didn't know exactly why. We're not, we're not starting yet, huh? Yeah, it will, it will try. Uh, all right. Because I don't want to work in some of the But it's, to me, it's, uh, this, it's, it's a sort of a direction in a way, because I felt it was the, uh, the process of being the doer and the thinker and the feeler is so fast in time. I don't see how any other process could get before that. That's all. So. Whatever we're introduced to, that which we're not will claim to be the one introduced to, yeah, like in a very, very fast time. So, and as soon as that is in place, it can go to such an absurd length that you'll be looking for what you are from what you're not, you know, which is insane to me. And this isn't really, uh, I don't see it. I may have saw it in the beginning as a subtler, path or a subtler idea, but after entertaining it a while, it really is, uh, it has nothing to do with any of that, really. It's just, basically, you'll be like reset, so to speak, almost like a, a computer program that's been running, and you've been, all you've been doing is upgrading and everything, but never really shutting down the computer and then maybe shake it and see how it resets. Yeah, so this is like a resetting where there's a, and a redistribution of attention and interest. Really. With, and you're not redistributing it. You, you, you observe it as this. This can observe effects, but it's not the cause of the effects. Yeah, but it can observe effects. So the message of in my experience, became the last answer, which is a great answer. Because I, uh, it took any need for any other answer in this topic. You know, it just negated all need for any other answer. And in a way, it looks like I've lost interest in spirituality, because I have, really, completely. But I, there's been a gaining of interest in the... Uh, rooted in that absolute that you can't be out of a moment or anything like that. All those things are just totally abs absurd to me. How you could be out of a moment and then learn how to get back in. <laughs> I think the real delusionary quality of that is the belief that you could be out of a moment. You know, when you were a kid you didn't have it. Yeah, and then it just grew and the mental states grew. So, the whole idea of time, and uh, all these influences that we don't know uh, our role in, really. You know, so we think time is, you know, goes from now to a future, and then there's past time, but it's always a linear going forward. But the mental state doesn't see time that way. The mental state uses time to imply that which comes after is before. It's an amazing move. If you ever see it, if you can really see it, that's, that's the hope of the, of the invitations, really, is for you and I, and it's not you and I, but mine, to see what we're talking about. Not to know it or understand it, but to see it. See it in activity, yeah? See it, and if, if, it's, if you see it, it's sort of like that spiritual shoe fits, you wear it, yeah? And then the seeing will trigger a, a lot of different downloads and a different reckoning of what's happening, yeah? Totally different than the mental state we come up with. Totally different. And then um, it, it's not like it destroys the mental state because the mental states, they're just activities, really. They don't need to be destroyed because you're not of activity, really. You may be active now, but you're not of activity. You're of that stillness or that space. But you will see what you used to look from a lot. Yeah, you will see, um, I wouldn't say more, 
but it's sort of more because the self-centeredness is myopic. It's a very, very small tunnel vision and it looks at everything as how it pertains to itself. So basically, where you would really like the big lens, the big opening here, it's the other way around, yeah? So you're looking in a very small way, but the big, the lens is capturing you <laughs> all the time, you know? You'd like to have it big out there, so but now it's just all you. <laughs> so all the seeing, is, is used to imply the seer. Now, do you have to see all of that? No, just see it a few times, and then it just leaps into an understanding where, you know, it's just sort of like knocking on the door of a house after 500 times, no one answers, no one's home. You know, it's not a big leap to that conclusion. So in this sense, you see what I'm sharing here. You see it in your own life, and then, Hopefully it will save you time because you don't have to see it over and over again. All you need to do is see it a few times and then you'll, you'll see and understand the mechanism. And if you see anything that was, be called, was called, let's say, alive or living and you see it mechanized, it gives you a sense of other. And then you get a sense of really what you are, which is other than that mechanicalness. Yes. But if you're assuming the mechanicalness by the claiming it's always about you, as you, yeah, then you will take yourself to be real, obviously. But when you see all that implies you is mechanical, then you'll see you're something other than that, yeah? By seeing what you're not, you'll get a sense of what you are. It's the greatest education here, is seeing what you're not, yeah? Because you can definitely study what you're not. Study doesn't mean you read books, it means you study it, you see it, and there's information there. There's information of time, and then you start seeing time, the influence of time in the dreaming. And if you don't see the influence of time in the dreaming, you're gonna see it as real a lot. Yeah, you are, yeah. The time is the main, like, obscuring agent, yeah, so, I have so much faith in this message because it's it's uh, it's a damn good description of what went up, and so hopefully you'll hear it from what you are, and then you'll hear about what you're not instead of hearing about what you are as what you're not. You'll hear about what you're not as what you are. It's just a little shift, and then it makes us certain. It starts making sense, and then even like a incredibly driven spiritual seeker may just stop, you know, just may stop and then find <laughs> If you stop, quiet, stop trying to acquire traits, you may have those traits already available. You just, you just don't believe so, so you're trying to acquire them. Through the only commerce, there's a couple of currencies here, but one of them is doing and having. So if you feel like you've done enough and have enough, then all right, now I'm feeling pretty chill, you know, or I have equanimity, or you give it a name, you know? But basically those traits are possibilities now, not for you, but as what you are, yeah? So, just get the horse in front of the car, and really then sit back, and then see what happens, you know? And uh, if it verifies itself for you, then just, the entertaining is starting, and it's never stopped really. Just allow it to entertain, and uh, you'll be homeschooled, <laughs> really, wherever home is. <laughs> you really will, yeah. And you can listen to others share, and then you can see a lot there. Yeah. You can watch what's happening here. Yeah. You can watch that which is thinking it's the thinker of the thoughts. And of course, the thinker would like to stop a lot of the thoughts. And then you start seeing, well, why is, that's a strange event. Yeah. <laughs> because the thinker is just a thought, really. But it has a little more tang to it than the thoughts. Because it produces a sense and it attributes it to, as the body. So you feel something as a body. 
And that's, that's proclaimed to be, the, oh, that's the sense of being the doer. That's the sense of being the thinker. That's the sense of being the feeler. That's the sense of being the one who lost in life, or one who won in life, yeah? It's these senses that are not, they're not uh, self-effulgent in a way, they're, they're uh, implied, yeah? There's a, there's a claiming of activities to imply the one. And then the one, and then it's calcifies with rightness, you know? The one, thinks it's so right about the one, yeah. It has its secrets, it has its this, it has its that, and all of it is like a, like a, a cocoon of like a spit, you know, it just keeps spinning and cocooning around this idea, yeah, and then you're like, all oh, the possibilities just shrink, unbelievably, yeah, yeah. But luckily here, you know, we can be in the act of dreaming ourselves out of the dreaming, and in a way, love is going to reclaim itself in you. It's just not going to allow it, yeah? So you may avoid its invitations once, twice, three times, but it's going to knock down the door, and you, this is going to feel like, a, oh, what the fuck? But really, it's, it's fucking, you see at, after, at the aftermath, that you're fucking hey, much more chilled out, much more open. So hey, yeah, fucking open heart surgery, you go, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and you really feel that's the grace in life. Where before you thought avoiding and getting over was the real move, but really, I just really feel life is just reclaiming itself. It's just because I think we deaden a lot of it, don't you think? When you live in. You're so, it's so frozen, there's so many dead zones. It's like what's happening in the ocean. There's those dead zones when there's no oxygen. There's dead zones that in like all the resentments and the memories that there has, the window hasn't been opened in years. It's fucking stuffy and tons of files. Proving what? I don't know. You know, how right you are about being wrong. <laughs> I don't know this, whatever. But there's, you're in all the case files. <laughs> and you're convicted. You're waiting for a fucking conviction. Your conviction's been suspended, but it could occur again. <laughs> it's just really, it's just, well. <clears throat> and I think Jesus said, you know, you have to become like children again. Well, what's a child? A child to me, if they're not, in a violent situation or a fearful situation, they're what we would call in the moment because they haven't entertained, they could be out of the moment. You know? They're just, they're present because they haven't, the dead mental state isn't that developed yet. You know, so they have their, it's almost, that's their baseline and maybe they have flipped out or whatever. And they don't have much idea of time yet so they can't really picture themselves yesterday and tomorrow. And so, in a way, it's, to the selfing, it would be like a forced condition, but it feels totally normal when you're a kid. And then, of course, the head develops, and then you become an object of, of thought and obsession, really. Yeah. And then, uh, if you, it's like, to me, in a weird way, is this. I didn't have, any time I went inside, I didn't find anybody. I really didn't. I thought every, they were bodies, people, but when I went in, you know, there was just nothing there. So I had to have a very good song and dance because I just wanted to keep everyone from like putting their finger, because it would have gone right through, so to speak. You know what I mean? It was like paper thin. <laughs> but it was probably a very good state, but the, what thought it was in the state was it, it was the mental state, wasn't seeing it as a good state was like, fuck, you know, I'm bad. It was like a big echo of that space, bad. <laughs> Some people may have good, I have the echo of bad. <laughs> I have no idea, but I'm bad, I know I am morally bad too. You know, I should have known better. <laughs> Maybe my Irish grandmother, growing up with her. <laughs> I was such a sponge, I soaked in a lot of her ideas, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they mutated unbelievably. <laughs> My grandmother would never recognize them. <laughs> so the 
message is just a simple one. I don't know where you're going to go from here, but let's just get located here. <laughs> and then my job's done. I'm not, we don't have a 30 year plan. I just want you, if you're drawn to do shit like meditation or devotion or what, or none of that, just we'll just reset you and, and see where it takes you. And in my case, it sort of put the end to stuff because that stuff was a disservice, really. Yeah? It wasn't... Uh, it, what I assumed it was producing, it wasn't producing it. It was like the lens was huge this way. I mean, especially, you get a huge sense of you looking into eternity through spiritual practices. <laughs> you get a big, big you. Huge. <laughs> huge. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I experienced with it. Like if I was doing dishes, it didn't mean much, but meditation, wow. that's very important. <laughs> and if I was drawn, it was, if I, the downloads came to meditate, I would, but it hasn't. It wants me to be, you know, very, 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 very mundane. <laughs> <laughs> I just come here and I just know, you know, from hearing it so much, because I've been at every Paul Hedeman meeting. <laughs> I've never been this one. And uh, it doesn't matter what people think or what, if it's right or wrong. It's just that the, the sense of it, I hope, is getting communicated. It's just a, it's a relaxation that doesn't come from effort or thought. It's like... Uh, you have the ability to enjoy peace of mind, and now you're enjoying peace of mind, yeah? Peace of mind. It's not like you produce peace of mind, it's available. You're wanting to produce a peace of mind is agitation, like the, the famous Zen thing. You can't use activity to produce stillness, that would be activity, exactly. You can't get out of that, yeah? Once you're in activity, which it, identification itself is complete activity, because it can never succeed. You can't be a self. So it always has to be in the, act, in the act of being identified as a self, which means like all the time. And when it and then when it's not, like if you're doing something you like or something happens, or maybe a satsang, or you have a big moment, you know, it doesn't get produced, but it will produce sooner or later and then claim to be the one that was in, in its absence. You know, it's just mind boggling. It really does. It's like, <laughs> it just blows my mind, you know, right? Because it comes in, we see it, but then we call it me. You see it. You have to see it because you're before it. You have to see it. You have to see selfing. Selfing doesn't produce the seer. The seeing, and then selfing implies the seer. To what? The seeing. And the seeing, seemingly, only it appears to seeing, it doesn't, seems to forget it's the seeing, and now it climbs into the glove of being the seer. That's what it does. For what? A, a 70 years? It's like nothing. You know what I mean? In the mind of God, as they say in course, it doesn't even know this is even happening. <laughs> It was just a crazy idea to entertain for a second, and it's sort of like a loop that some of it is in. <laughs> How could everything leave anyone behind, you know? So obviously, it has no idea this is going on, probably. <laughs> so there it is. See, you're before everything. It's, there's, no other, there's no way around it. You're it, you know? The course is so beautiful because it doesn't get, doesn't buy, oh, I'm in someone's dream, or I'm, you know, I'm being dreamt by God, or whatever it is. Or, it says, you're the dreaming. Yeah, so all these things you're attributing to some supernatural power, you're it. You're the supernatural power. You're the dreaming of the dreaming. You're giving everything all the meaning it has. I wouldn't, see, what else are you going to say that to? other than everything. <laughs> Nothing else is going to be giving everything all the meaning it has other than the dreaming, yes? It's, I don't see how there can't be a leap back. How can you, it's like in recovery, 
you know, people will be there at a meeting, beautiful meeting, and then one lady will start sharing, hey, it's amazing, all of you think just like I do, and feel just like I do, and do the same things I do, and I was like, well, I just kick her over the edge, you know, cool. and then she's right there, and she goes, and it just goes absorbed back in the cell phone, yeah? If, you, if everyone has your thoughts, they're not yours. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, open, they're public source. <laughs> can't be, for your, them to be yours, they have to be like individual and unique. They're not. They're a stock version of a system called self-centeredness. <laughs> and a lot of people who suffer from extreme conditions of self-centeredness, maybe enter a program of recovery where all the, all the victims of this parasitical movement, start talking about what it's like to live like them, and then everyone's like, wait a minute, that sounds like me. <laughs> well, yes, <laughs> because it's not you. It's the one parasite taking over all the hosts. All right, do you stop there? No, you take it even farther. Yeah. Yeah. Take it even farther, there is no host. And there are no parasites. There just is what is. And what is is dreaming it ain't in a lot of ways. Yeah. And to talk about the dream to the dreamt doesn't go anywhere. You want to talk to the dreaming. Because the dreaming's got the juice. The dreamt doesn't. The dreamt is, the dreamt is a is is an expression. It's not a cause. So to talk to it about, it, you're gonna get it. You know, it's not gonna get it. It can express it, it's not going to get it. So turn, you know, fire, it's sort of like complaining to the next door neighbor about the other next door neighbor, when it would be better if you just like, complain to the landlord, because maybe they could do something. But to talk, you know, it doesn't go anywhere, because the next door neighbor has no power over the, you know what I mean? But maybe the landlord would say, all right, you can't be parking in number three spot, you know, or you can, all right, yeah. But we're like, we we'll keep going to this. I'm going to wait until you get it, you know. Fucking no, this is a dead horse, move on. You know, it's going to be brought back to life because you're it, really. You're the one that's projecting it. Why would you have it determine you when you're the determination of it? This is the horse in front of the cart. Mind comes before everything in the production of or manifestation in time. Mind is before everything. Mind projects and then there's a perception of it. Yeah? Perceiving is not what's happening. There's projection, which is the dreaming. Then there's perceiving the dreaming from the dreamt's point of view, and we take the dreaming to be real. Yeah? So why would you want to waste any time talking to the dreamt about anything? <laughs> Just talk to the dreaming. It's right here now. Yeah? How could it not be? So if you can keep throwing it over the dreamt's head, <laughs> the dreamt will never get it, and that's the getting of it, because then that which you are will express through what you're not. Yeah? It's inevitable. And this, and this will get its greatest bonanza, it will travel lighter, and be very, very clear it's not the cause of that. It's an expression of it, which keeps a sense of humility in it, yeah? And so it's right-sized, and you, you know, you render unto Caesars what Caesars. It's not like, fuck, fuck the body, there's no body. Yeah, watch, you know. If the body has alcoholism, and you try to treat it with non-duality, you're going to have a drunk non-dualist. Yeah. <laughs> this is what's going to happen. The action figure has its, has its little uh, effects and influences. Yes? Yes. So render unto Caesars what Caesars. Yeah. And then render unto that what's that. Yeah. So have a little sense of the of this while you seem to be in. Instead of looking for the otherness in the end, it ain't there. Because you are what's looking. You're what, you're the otherness, yes? So have you listened a lot or a little? A little? Uh, to you, uh, not that much. Oh, all right. Well, all right. So
So then let's let's break it down a little bit then. So non-duality to me is a negation, yeah, not to. So and I think it sticks with that the whole way. So it's not even in in the hearing of the message. It's stupid to describe what's indescribable, first of all. But if you want to go for that, try to describe the indescribable. But you're just, what's going to claim to be the one that's hearing it is what you're not. It is, I don't give a damn who you think you are. There's, there's going to be a who that you think you are. <laughs> Could be different ones, but it's going to be one, yeah. And I feel it's stubbornness <coughs> is going to outride, override epiphanies, incredible fucking experiences, peak, peak experiences, even to some people awakening. They will think that they've lost the awakening, and that's worse than ever having the awakening. It's, it's like a double whammy. Can you imagine? Jesus, guys, it's like my idea when I was younger of uh, hell would be uh, knowing God and have no recourse to arrive there to know God, but have no ability to arrive there, that would be hell. That's a pretty good one, eh? So you would know what you were missing completely. I think so. I had a lot of time on, on cocaine retreats. <laughs> All right, so then, the how we present this message is to really throw it over our heads. First of all, it's not coming from me and it's not meant to go to you. It's just throwing, it's like a, it's like in the beginning of a basketball game, they throw the ball up. Well, this way, we throw the ball up past both of our arms and then something catches it. <laughs> the game's canceled. <laughs> all bets are off. <laughs> so that's it. We throw it over our heads. <laughs> because there's something here that's, you would say it's always listening, so you could say it's listening now, because it's always listening. And, uh, yeah, so there's the message. It gets thrown there. And so, if you break it down to the dreaming and the dreamt, it would, we wouldn't direct the message to the dreamt, we would direct it to the dreaming. Yeah, because the dreamt, is defined by dreamtness, so its idea of being the dreamer, the dreaming would be like I should have 50 Cadillacs or perfect knee joints or whatever, you know, some weird fucking other uh, secret thing, the law of attraction, have every fucking great, like, tons of fucking abundance, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> that doesn't go. But if the dreaming here is the description of the dreaming, then the dreaming can go, wait a minute. Because <laughs> it's, in a sense, see, for something to stop, if there, if there is a doing that needs to be stopped or changed or ratified, you'd have to get to the imaginary doer, right, that's doing it. <laughs> to talk to everyone else, it would be gossip. Right? But to talk, hey, I, I, don't want, not, I don't want Bill to do that, I mean, we'll talk to fucking Bill. Phil seems to be the doer. So you want to go to the dreaming, because the dreaming is giving everything all the meaning it has. Yeah. yeah, all right, so let's go to the dreaming about the dreamt. And so what, what is it about the dreamt? There's, a, there's an identification of mind being a long-lasting, independent, separate thing. Yeah. So it doesn't arrive at being the body. It arrives at being the body by the claiming of everything. So by claiming of actions, thoughts, feelings, to imply the feeler, the thinker, and the actor, that all those attributions, all that claiming, is sort of pasted onto this object. So the body, every time there's a feeling of being a thinker, you don't feel it in a thought. The sense is a body sense, yeah? Don't you get it? It feels like Paul, Paul Paul's thinking. And Paul is pictured as this. It's not Paul as the ultimate void of, of, of all emptiness. It's like 6-2, you know, Paul. <laughs> Paul's the doer. So the doing, see, the doing, which is happening, yeah, is claimed by the mental state to imply the doer. So 
Consciousness is happening. That's what allows everything to be noted through the five gates, seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. Yes, and then in Buddhism they have the sixth gate would be the mental, the mind seeing thoughts or hearing thoughts. Yeah. So there's the six gates. So consciousness is experiencing stuff here. Alright? So consciousness suddenly it gives it gives birth to an action. So the action occurs and the mental state arises. Not at the moment of consciousness, but in it, yeah, in consciousness, in a little bubble called time, so to speak, yeah. So now conscious, the, now the mental state arises, which is really the beginning of time, because it needs time. And it goes, on the, that doing implies there's a doer, yeah. So it just keeps pointing, pointing, pointing. It's almost as in, in Zen when they have this, you know, the finger pointing to the moon. The pointing produces the moon, so to speak. Yeah. In this way, the claiming of all this stuff, constantly pointing, produces an image. So the body is seen, and then all the doing, etc. Almost like getting tattooed. If there was empty space and you just kept tattooing it, it and took a form, it would yes. You know what I mean? If you had it, just like when they have a, almost, almost like in Thailand when they go have those Buddha statues and they all have gold leaf in it, it's almost as if there's nothing in there. It's just gold leaf. Yeah? You could see it that way. So, do a thinker, feel a, do a thinker, feel a, do a thinker, feel a, and then there you go. Every time the claiming of the doing implies the doer, you have a sense that you're the doer. The sense is a physical sense, yeah? That's the sense of self. It's being produced. So how does it do it? Consciousness, that is not of time, you know? Nor is there volition. If your eyes are open, you're gonna see what's there. You know, you're not choosing, I'm choosing to see that bird. You can fucking say that, but you're gonna see the bird. The seeing the bird happening already, and then you think, oh, I chose to see that bird. It's crazy, really. But so, so consciousness, yeah, not of time. Mental state arises of time. Claims the actions, yeah, which you need time to have, yeah, for something to happen. There needs to be time to happen. In, yes, you see. In nothing, there's nothing happening. There's no time. Or everything's happening, and there's no time. But when there's a, so, there's an action. And then the mental state claim uses it to claim the actor. So the actor comes after the action, but then it's implied to be before the action. So now you start gathering pride out of the action or guilt or shame. I would say guilt and shame probably outweighs most of the opportunities of pride. You know what I mean? It's usually got a lot of shit you're not that happy about more than the great moments. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so they claim enough shit, and then what happens? Beliefs built up, yes? Habits, programming, conditioning. So it's sort of like in the water. If you saw water, and there's twigs and leaves, they're all being moved by the current. But if you stick a rock in that water, the, the water gets turned over around the rock, yeah? And it loses its oomph, and then the shit starts coagulating around the rock, like leaves and twigs and you know, gum wrappers, and after a while, it's almost like there's a surface other than water on the surface, yeah? It's like a big thing. And you know, I can't stand all this, but you never take the rock out. So if you see you're not the rock, then the flow is happening, yes? But the, you know what I mean? It's like the thing with, you know, you want to get rid of the moths, but you want to have the light to see them. <laughs> if you just run through the light bulb, the moths split. You see, they are attracted to something. So all the stuff, all the conditioning and program is attracted to this object. Yes, yes, yes. So you stay in a cocoon of time almost, yeah? By all the claiming and all, I was that, I will be this, and I therefore I am some smorgasbord of all this, yes? I was, I will be, therefore I am. It doesn't start with I am. It goes, I was which has to be produced all day. I will be, it has to be produced all day. And then it arrives at this moment, therefore I am. And now you start here instead of starting.
before, yeah? Because now the after has been implied to be before, to the point where you will start looking for what you are from what you're not. You will actually, the spirit of what you are, whatever you want to call it, is now becomes an object maybe you may be interested in or not, yeah? So God doesn't seem to have any role in your life until you want to become a knower of God. Then suddenly God becomes, you got to see some suspiciousness there. Yes, you seem to be the biggest God in the whole situation. Yeah, so I saw it, you know, I saw it enough that it would be There's a seeing of it now, but there's no need to open it anymore. <laughs> You've already looked in and there's nothing there. You've looked in enough that you don't need to check every luggage, you know? Nah, I go. <laughs> there's no bombs in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got an easy job. <laughs> you don't have to go through 8,000 pieces of luggage, just a few and so. And then you see the whole, uh, just like in alcoholism, the parasite only has a few, a few traits. It doesn't have an infinite amount of traits. It may have an infinite amount of hosts to express those traits, but the traits aren't infinite, yeah? So if you catch a few of them, you get to know, you get a picture of it by its manifestation. So you can know that the parasite likes the dark, likes a lot of drama, likes to fucking be right, likes to hate things, likes revenge, very vindictive, and it loves to sort of curl up with its tail and just eat itself all day. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> How much, you're not going to domesticate it or make it a friend. It's not going to become a service dog. <laughs> you just have to see it's not you. Yeah, if you see it's not you, all the interest in trying to not be that, <laughs> which has actually been giving you experience of being it more than ever, you just lose interest in it. You really do. You lose interest. It's sort of like, hey, I just don't give a shit about it much anymore. And then watch the results. You, you, got, you have an observational ability, yeah? You're not two levels below a coconut, are you? No. So we're there. So after years, or maybe a few months, you can see, hey, Jesus, I'm traveling a lot lighter, and there's no way I can write myself into the story. I just can't see it because, you know, I didn't even know it was coming, really. I just, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I just, I just soared over the years and you come to a conclusion, hey, I'm traveling lighter and then what more, what more do I want? You know, so now the action figure has reached enough. You can't, it does not want to meditate for 14 hours. Your left cheek doesn't want to sit on a fucking cushion for 14 hours. It doesn't. And it's going to make it hell if you try to do it. It is. It's going to be the dominant experience at the retreat. It's going to happen. So, <laughs> this, is a, this is sort of like, a, hmm, you know, that ring of the center of attention moves. Yes? It still has its little stage and its little play, but now there's a huge amphitheater around it, not, not totally locked in, yeah? And you see others, and you see all the commonality, and like we say in AA, uh, you lose interest in your little plans and designs, because in the head, all your plans and designs are big plans. <laughs> so, so he says in a nice little jab, you know, your little plans and designs, <laughs> you lose interest in that. <laughs> and you gain interest in others, yes? Or maybe you'll just gain interest, let's see. And to me, now the interest is here because I can't imagine I could be anywhere else. <laughs> and therefore you never get gypped because you're never not here. You're just not. I don't, you just don't, I do not believe it. I don't believe you can get into the moment. Because you, you, you never left the moment. <laughs> so, who cares how you arrive at it? You know, 
I don't want to be right. <laughs> I just want the effect. I wanted relief, and I can't get relief as that of as that which is the source of agitation. Can't do it. I, there's got to be uh, a suspension of belief in it to a certain point where it goes on doing its whatever, but you're you're not a hundred percent in it anymore. Yeah. The attention and interest has lifted and now is enriching your day instead of being used to enslave your day by yesterday and tomorrow. Yeah, Because without interest and attention, there's no way you could conjure up next week and have it override tonight. There's no fucking way. We're miracle workers, really. And we do it, you know, the thoughts go out there, but then it's our interest, not our, but interest and attention that fucking brings last Wednesday and just drops it on this Wednesday. <laughs> and then everyone looks at you, why are you so fucked? How are you gonna, well, you know, last Wednesday, but when? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. That was last Wednesday. How can it, how can it encroach on your Wednesday tonight? Unless you, as the great magician, bring it in, yeah? Dogs aren't doing that, are they? No. Cats, our cat is not fucking ruining its night by last next week. It's a fucking isn't, you know? So, yeah, that's sort of the flavor of it. You see what you're not, because you are, see, yeah? Why not just uh, rely on that quality? All the qualities of being the seer are fucking catacombed with bullshit, really. A lot of mutation, a lot of weird fucking fruit sellers in there. You know, you don't want to go down. But, but, but as seeing, it's like a fresh fucking stream, you know what I mean? It's bubbling and they make a sound. You know, fucking, it's live, tactile aliveness, you know? Awake is brilliant, in a sense. And I feel most of us searching for awakeness is trying to clamp down on the awakeness, really. We're trying to <coughs> muffle it and shit by looking for it all day when it's obviously right where we are, as St. Francis says, what's looking is what you're looking for. Does he put any qualifications on that? Yeah, now and here. That's what's looking now and what's looking here is what you're looking for. That's it. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, no, it's going to end up some, it's got to land sometime. You can't have it fucking circling the tarmac. It's, it's, it becomes obvious, doesn't it? It's just fucking land. <laughs> You've gotten done with it, you know? And then you'll be reset, and maybe you can just enjoy. And to me, not remembering, you know, my, when I was young, acceptance used, seemed to come from people, like my grandmother and my mother, you know? And then they passed away. And uh, I sure wasn't getting much acceptance from my head. Yeah? And that just went on and on. And uh, acceptance, maybe I could win some by jumping through a lot of hoops, but the rules would change all the time, you know. And uh, what happened is that the acceptance of what I'm not was like a thief in the night. It just started coming into this life. And uh, the Urban Renewal Project was canceled, and this is it, you know. This is, it has its ability. It's being used, and there you go. Yeah. Why would you want to polish something that's going to corrode and erode in any way? You know, just keep it all buffed out a little. You know, so it <laughs> so it's got some some whatever the thing with the aerodynamics. You know, so it travels lighter. But fuck, you know, so where should? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's a message. I hope I say it as clear as possible. But more is the sense of direction, you know. I'm hoping it doesn't conjure up any movement whatsoever in you. <laughs> that's the point. I'm hoping it doesn't not one muscle move or spasm or nothing. I gotta get on with it. No. I hope it's more of a disarming. And then see what, what's fucking put down, really. And then maybe you'll realize how much activity has been going on when you thought you were still, yeah, yeah.
to see it. So, all right, any questions? No? All right, uh, let's pass the basket. Turn that off, I think. I'm finished now. And then uh, we're going to go to.